Hello once again. For this uh, lesson, what we'll be doing is going through the Bowen's Reaction Series Simulator, which is linked inside of uh, today's lesson, uh, January 9th and 10th classwork. So let's see, where is it here? Uh, I can't, oh, there it is. Complete the Bowen's Reaction Series Simulator questions. I'll just click on that link and that'll open up this window. And the questions are here, but they're also on a, uh, 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 on a handout, page 32. So if I click here, that'll actually go to the website that's got the simulator, but that's not the simulator yet. To open it, we've got to click here. Well, there, but it says here. Uh, and then once we've got that open, you may have to click on run this time to get the Java applet to actually work. And it's not going to look like much when you first see it. So we've got a window up here that's got a bunch of names of elements here. We've got silicon. Uh, it tells us that 49% of what's inside of here is silicon. 3% uh, is aluminum, 44% is iron, 2% calcium, and that's it. Uh, Extols, by the way, simply means crystals, and the rate is the actual rate at which uh, this, this magma is cooling. So this is supposed to be a pool of magma. Now, why it's not red, I can't tell you. I didn't write the code for this, uh, but just pretend. Just work with me here. So this is supposed to be red. So right now we've got the default setting, which is mafic. But we can change that and watch the elements change inside of our uh, melt. As we slide from mafic to intermediate, you can see that we've increased the silicates uh, or the silicon, 52%. Aluminum is 19. Iron has changed as well too. And let's slide that right across and we should see some changes, especially down at this end. And there we go. We've got a little hydrogen in there. we got lots of uh, potassium, a little bit of sodium, and, uh, and, and a huge amount of silicon. So that's the basic settings right there. We can go from mafic to felsic. Um, and the only other really significant setting is our rate of cooling. I'm going to put it back, if you notice here, back to mafic. We'll just leave the default mafic setting for now. And I'm going to set the cooling rate to 2, which is what it tells you to do in the worksheet. The only thing is that's kind of a slow rate. It's a little bit boring. So let's just crank that up to 10 just for fun. And we'll let that sit there and see what happens. And down around 1300 degrees, we're going to start to see crystals. Oh, that was too fast. Okay. I got a little carried away there with that cooling rate of 10. We'll drop it down to two. And you can see that now what we're starting to get are some crystals forming and they're forming a little bit slower uh, since we've set the cooling rate to two. Let's bump it up to three, uh, maybe even four. And what, what's happening, you can see when I change the cooling rate, it changes the rate at which the temperature inside of this melt uh, or magma pool is dropping. We're down to 1280 degrees and ah, we're starting to see something else happen here. I'll slide this over so we can see the key. And what we've got is some plagioclase uh, feldspar that's starting to crystallize now. So again, once it drops to 1200 degrees, plagioclase starts to solidify. Um, if you remember the continuous and discontinuous branches of the Bowen's reaction series, we should get olivine forming at roughly the same time as plagioclase, uh, but each will crystallize uh, at, uh, at probably a slightly different temperature, but it would happen at close to the, the same time period inside of this uh, uh, slowly solidifying melt. Okay, this is mafic material, and if you remember the six tendencies of the Bones reaction series, what happens is uh, the more mafic the material, the higher the melting temperature, uh, therefore the higher the solidifying temperature, and so the crystallization or solidification of the minerals inside of this melt happens at a fairly high temperature. Uh, we're down at 1,000 degrees, and at 1,000 degrees, most of this is crystallized. And if we look at the, let's see, crystals, no, never mind that. If we, if we were to add up uh, the olivine, peroxine, plagioclase, and affable, what we would find is that right now we're probably at very close to 100%. Actually, it's 101%. I don't know how we went over 100%. But if we were to click quench right now, that will instantaneously cool it uh, down to 25 degrees Celsius. And the key that everything that was inside of here crystallized uh, is here where we can see that there's no glass. Uh, anytime you instantaneously cool a magma, what you end up with is glass. And if we were to take um, a partially solidified magma and then instantaneously cool it, whatever was left would turn to glass. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and so what we've got right now, once again, is a mafic. Uh, rock because it has cooled down now. It's 25 degrees. Uh, let's see. The silicates are 33%. That tells us that fits in pretty well with what we would expect for a mafic rock. 
and we can see that there's some fairly large crystals. These are viewable or visible crystals. And so this uh, gives us a clue as to the texture, and we can determine right away if there are visible grains that this must be a phaneritic rock. So can we identify the actual rock? What rock is this? Well, what we would do is use this chart, and what we, can, what we already know is that it's mafic, and that means that if it's a mafic rock, it's going to be either gabbro or basalt. Now basalt is our aphanetic member. The bottom row is aphanetic, the top row is phaneritic, and so therefore it must be gabbro, and that's exactly what this is. We should be able to confirm this another way as well too though. And if you take a look at the actual uh, minerals inside of uh, this rock, we can see that 10% is olivine, 77% is pyroxene. These are dark ferromagnesian minerals. Uh, and 10% is plagioclase. If only 10% is plagioclase, that means that, well, this line here, from here to here is 10%. That means that that's about how much, that's about the line right here, which means that this is actually borderline ultramafic. Um, which means really this would be more like peridotite. If I were to ask this on a test, uh, you would probably want to say that this is peridotite. So once again, our, our clue to identifying this rock is adding up all the dark ferromagnesium minerals, uh, biotite, amphibole, peroxine, and olivine. And you can see if we add them all up, I did forget amphibole. If we add those all up, we got uh, 87, 90, sorry, we've got 87, 91. So 91, 90, let's say 90% is going to be dark ferromagnesian minerals and 10% is plagioclase. So what we would do, another way to identify this, is find that 90% line, which is right here, and simply extrapolate, draw right across until we intersect and we know that this is roughly where that rock lies. So it's 90% uh, would make it ultramafic. Okay, so there's our first one done. And that should answer some of the questions on that worksheet as well, too. Let me just quickly uh, open it up and, and go through it. Uh, and I got to find the right page here. So first question is to start the simulator. We've done that. What's produced when you hit the quench button directly? Okay, let's do that now. What I'm going to do is restart the simulator by clicking here. We'll click run this time once again. And I'll leave it uh, mafic once again. I, I, if you want to change it, go ahead. It doesn't really matter. But if we take any pool of magma, and remember this is our imaginary pool of magma, and any if you click quench and immediately cool it, what you're going to find out is that you always end up with glass. It instantaneously turns to glass if you've uh, cooled it fast enough. And this is exactly what happens in the real world. It's only through slow cooling that we see visible crystals. So let's try that again. I'll click here and we'll run this time, and I'm going to take it all the way over to Felsic. We'll click the quench button where we go from 1500 degrees instantaneously down to 25 degrees. You can see that there's no visible grains. We would expect this to be aphanetic. However, uh, this tells us that it's glass, and so this is actually a glassy texture as opposed to aphanetic. And in fact, what we have is, is actual glass. All right, so that answers the first couple of questions, uh, and let's click here once again. Click Run, we'll leave it at Mafic, we'll bump it up to maybe 7 or 8, and I'm going to read the next question. It says, start with a Mafic magma and set the cooling rate to 1 to 2, but we're going to speed things up a little bit. Watch to see what happens patiently. At what temperature does the first mineral begin to form? And that first mineral did start to form, well, 1370, 1380. Uh, and what is it? So what we can do is move that over and use the key to identify it, and you can see that it's olivine. Is it in the continuous or discontinuous branch? I'll let you look that up on your Bowen's Reaction Series chart. Rem remembering that the discontinuous branch is on the left-hand side and the continuous, the uh, feldspars, is on the right-hand side. So what temperature does the next mineral begin to form at? And so we'll once again increase the cooling rate so that this thing is cooling. And we should see something else start to form fairly quickly. Not much happening. Oh, there we go. Okay, so at about 1270 degrees or so, we started to see the uh, uh, plagioclase form. And that does fit again. Uh, is that continuous or discontinuous? Next question. And I think that the rest of this should be fairly much self-explanatory. 
Uh, let me just quickly go through them. What branch? What forms next? What branch? When the temperatures reach 600 degrees, hit the quench button. And then it asks you to identify the material. Now, we've already done this. We did that using, I'm going to just uh, speed the rate up here. We've already already identified this using this chart, and we determined that because about 90% of the minerals are dark ferromagnesians, uh, that it must be in the ultramafic category. Because it uh, has visible grains or is phanaritic, we know that it is in the top row, which means it must be pertatite. And if you notice, there is no counterpart. There is no aphanitic counterpart to pertatite, and that's because we don't see surface flows, which cool rapidly and uh, as a result have no visible grains. Uh, it, it simply doesn't happen. It hasn't happened for millions of years and we probably won't s uh, see that happening again until there's a supercontinent that forms. And what will eventually happen is uh, those, um, those magma flows that create things like the plateau in Washington State uh, will start to happen again once the next supercontinent starts to split up. So again, we're, we're many, many hundreds of millions of years away from, from that happening. Okay, I think that's it for this uh, exercise. Best of luck.